All right, so we got humanity is the worst Warhammer race to live as. Oh, wow. Let's get into the video. Well, this video did well. Time to write its coattails. Selling uh -oh. my values for money. Whoop, whoop. Nah, for real, though. Have you ever thought about how much it sucks to be a human in one of the Warhammer settings? Seriously, being easy to know that's right. The Warhammer human empires, be it 40k or fantasy or Age of Sigmar, would be absolutely miserable. I'm talking constant pain and despair for 99.999999% of people. Oh, that's Lord. eight nines. That's as many nines as my first gamer tag had. I was like 10. Leave me alone. Honestly, though, that's sometimes fine. people will say that humanity in these settings, particularly 40k, doesn't doesn't really have it that bad and that for the average person things are looking pretty all right and i have to say i really disagree yeah you know i disagree what hey after everything that i heard and learned about bro the human bro humans are like bro humans get treated so like crazy in the warhammer universe is cr bro like i'm pretty sure like bro, hu bro humans they get wiped like this bro it's like playing god of war you know how, like uh back then like the old god of war games how you're kratos and like Kratos would just go crazy on like random people like in the town or whatever. You'll take like their red orbs. That's how easy they are, bro. Like, bro, humans are legit bait to all of like these primarchs and all of these like, you know, demigods and stuff like that, bro. Like, bro, we're dust to these people. For a number of reasons. It sucks to be a human being there. It sucks hard. Let me tell you why. First off, fantasy. I mean, it's pretty simple here. In Bretonia, for starters, because I love shitting on Bretonia, you're a medieval serf as a default state of being. You wake up, you farm, you repair roads in your thatched hut with one room in it, two if you're an extremely wealthy peasant. You share this hut with your farm animals because there's no affording a barn for them. Again, you're a medieval serf and everything is owned by the lord of the land. You pay the vast majority of the food you grow and any things you make to said lord in exchange for security and land because medieval life was a nationwide protection Man, they racket tax and fancy armor. Death. Lords treat you like absolute dog shit. You should be honored if one of them walks all over you like a rug because that means the lord paid attention to you long enough to do so. If you're really lucky, you might be cannon fodder in one of their wars. And if you're lucky enough to be a Bretonian noble, it isn't much better because you're still at a medieval standard of living. Things like modern medicine and refrigeration or germ theory are at best crazy talk and at worst going to get someone killed for being a chaos cultist. Sure, you get to feast a lot as a noble, but that's still barely anything. Do you know how much flavor is in that bag of chips you're eating? A single Dorito chip would kill someone from medieval times they'd go into shock why do you think boy, boy they would man bro man we so blessed man let me tell you something if you got if you guys ever had like a like a like a like a um like a dish from like the from like the south oh my goodness gracious let me tell you something listen of course your boy's black let me tell you something bro you know like back then they was eating all like they was eating chickens and stuff like that bro let me tell you something bro nowadays bro see we got so creative with, like with our flavors and stuff like that bro if somebody from the medieval times had like chicken and fish now, bro, they're seeing the heaven gates first bite. I'm just being completely honest with you, bro. Salt and pepper were so goddamn valuable back then. Food was crap. I swear it's not just the ogre in me talking, the stuff was bland as hell. If you're a human in Bretonia, you're gonna be in for a shit time if you aren't lucky enough to drink the Lady of the Lake's gamer girl bathwater. And even then, you still have to deal with all the trash living conditions around you. You just get magically healed and live a little longer. If I shot you in the heart, but it magically healed, you'd still be in pain even if you don't die from it. Mm, and the Empire true. of Man isn't much better. The common folk aren't treated quite as poorly, but that's offset by the fact that the Industrial Revolution and its consequences are right around the corner for them. The good old massive wealth inequality, horrible factory conditions, and other things like horrid and squalid living conditions that made Karl Marx write that little book of his. So at best, the Empire of Man citizens can look forward to a communist revolution in their future, even disregarding that whole end times business. Same deal for Imperial nobles as Bretonian nobles, only they don't even get the Lady of the Lake's piss jar for magical health and life extension. Did you know that in the Gotrick and Felix novels, Felix is treated by a doctor and is shocked when the doctor doesn't use leeches in the four humor school of medicine that's what these people have to look forward to and almost Dang. welcome the black death compared to that and if you live in either of those two countries you sure as hell are gonna have to deal with the plague every now and then nippon sure oh exists my lord the plague oh my bro the great plague oh listen i'm gonna be honest with you bro if i was born in the medieval time ooh, see i can't say that because if i was born in the medieval times man i can't lie to you bro oh man i listen I can't lie to you, bro. Listen, I'm looking. At, I'm looking at my skin right now, and I can't lie to you. It was, I, I, bro, bro. Listen, if I was born in those times, it wouldn't be a great time for me either. <laughs> man, it would not be a pleasant time for me either. But listen, man, I thank God that we're in 2024, man, because woo, man. It, it, listen, man, if they was to take the boy back to the medieval times, man, ooh, man, man, I, ooh, I'd be doing free labor. That's all I can 
the oh same my goodness. Same for Araby, so who the fuck knows what's going on there? I'm assuming these countries have the same living <laughs> situations as above, but I, I crack guess I can't up. say for certain. Talea is right next to Skaven Blight, so add all the fun of being a Renaissance era peasant combined with the fact you live next to these things. Doesn't he look like a friendly neighbor? Uh, the border princes are the same like as Talea, only instead of Skaven, it's orcs. And Cathay lives by the ogres, who sometimes like to come uh, out of the mountains and devour a town or troll for lunch. Beyond that, I'm willing to bet that it's mostly the same as the Empire and or Bretonia, only with the added benefit that they're based on Chinese history. So I can only imagine at least one city in Cathay has had its occupants eaten by the military after rations ran out during a siege. God, I love Chinese history. Oh, and of course humanity has to deal with the occasional raid by beastmen, or vikings, or rat people with machine guns, or elves looking to add to the pile of rape slaves in their dungeon, or elves who are theoretically on their side but the humans had the gall to ask why an army of elves suddenly showed up in their border, so of course the elves had to defend themselves from this wanton act of aggression, or attacks from their dwarven allies because a thousand years ago one particular human's ancestor accidentally shorted a dwarf two silver pieces in a trade deal, so oh, obviously wow. the whole county had to go, or mushrooms. And for this video, unlike the ogres, I'll compare them to the other fantasy races so you can really appreciate how suck human lives are. First off, they're close neighbors, the dwarfs. I'm not screwing with you, dwarfs in fantasy have a damn near perfect immune system. It's brought up in, once more, Gotrick and Felix. The dwarfs were doing the thing where they complain about everything, including humans being weak compared to them. Felix got some good comebacks in though, so that was neat. But anyway, yeah, as a dwarf, you're not getting sick, so for living conditions, that's pretty fucking insane. Hygiene just isn't an issue. But beyond that, their lives are pretty comfy. Or at least comfy in the sense that they care about. Dwarf holds are pretty damn nice. Sure, they deal with invading orcs and ratmen, but that's everyone. If everything's going well, they're damn near impregnable in a siege. And the dwarfs, while also in the stage of the Industrial Revolution, are so obsessed with things working right and following OSHA protocols that their factories, for one, aren't run by child labor, and two, they don't run the risk of cutting off some poor bastard's fingers because the owners couldn't be bothered to turn a machine off while it's getting fixed. Sure, if you fuck up, you have to join the death cult, but even then, there's nothing stopping a dwarf from living his best life and drinking and singing across the world's taverns on his way to find something big. You know, bro, like, the dwarves, like, I'm gonna be honest, like, like the dwarves, hopefully I'm saying that right, they kind of remind me of, like, they remind me of, like, the, of, like, the dad that, like, gets off of work. Like, he, like, the dad that goes to work every single day, he's honorable, he, you know, he takes care of his family, um, you know, they, they go do what they got to do. They come home and they just, they, they kick their feet up and they have a beer. They remind me of like those like type of like, like dads or like fathers. Like, I don't know why, but like, they kind of just remind me of like people like, you know, who worked all week and then on Friday, they just went to the bar just to like kick it with some people. I, I, they kind of remind me of, I don't know why. It's scary enough to kill them. They also live pretty damn long. So you'll have plenty of chances to enjoy life. The dwarfs are also a simple people. Love me mines, love me ale, love me grudging, Yo, simple as. I just said you're a dwarf, that. it's easy Look. to be content. If you're a human, you're probably miserable. How about the elves? Well, high elves, for starters, just use magic to fix everything that goes wrong, so disease is again a non-issue. That's Even boring. Even with its magical bloodline curse just fixes it with some potions. Beyond that, it's similar to the dwarfs, with everything being comfy on Ulthuan in a more traditional sense rather than the dwarven sense of, it works so we're happy with it. They are depressed as a race because of how far they've fallen, but being sad because grandpa was better than you is something I'll take over working at a weapons factory in Nuln where the safety rules are to have fun and try not to fall in the molten metal they use to form the cannons. As for the Dark Elves, well yeah, they don't have the best living conditions for a lot of them, but the Druki don't give a shit about comfort. One of the buildings in Total Warhammer 2 says as much, they just care about getting slaves and murdering things. Slaves which of course are usually human, so there's another mark against mankind in these shithole worlds. And the Wood Elves? I have no fucking idea, man. They live in Athol Lorne, which is absolutely insane, but the forest likes them so they get to have magical woodland fairy lives instead of being murdered by Ents. Except sometimes the Ents still murder them because they're angry at them for whatever. Bro, what type of monstrosity is that, bro? What type of build is this? Oh, nah, he gotta be a glitch. For a reason. Also, they sometimes hold hunts where they run down Bretonian citizens for a laugh. It really sucks to be Bretonian. Of for course, a the laugh? Wood never really complain about it, and I'm pretty sure the average wood elf is also batshit insane, so they don't care about these downsides. Use some magic and your mundane problems are gone, and any other problems they don't see as problems. Yeah, of course the dryad feast out of my entrails. That just happens in Athel Lauren, you know? I'm still living it up. I made a whole video on why ogre lives are great, so if you want that explanation, here it is. <laughs> no, I don't have any shame. Thank you for asking. It's From what I gathered, a like Sigmar that. is more or less the same for the average person, only with the added benefit of whatever you live in being miserable in its own unique way. Do you live in Akshi? I hope you don't mind 120 degree heat 24-7. I know uh -oh. there's one city in the realm of life that's industrializing so horribly that it chokes the surrounding area with smog 24-7, so there's that one too. Or you could smog? live in the realm of beasts where you have to contend with the mountain you live on actually being a giant angry turtle. God, these settings suck for oh, the average hell person. No. The only race with the worst standard of living in humanity are the Skaven. Bro, these rat- Ooh, I hate them. Ooh, man. These little rat- 
rat little uh 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 these little cocky rat little warriors or whatever, bro. I don't like them. I hate them. I just listen. I'm not a, I'm not a you know evil guy or nothing like that, bro. We gotta call the exterminator, bro. We gotta get him out of here, bro, bro, bro. We need big bottles of of, of bro. We need. Yo, 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 I got to call the exterminator. I, I know, you know, for, for rats this size, it may be like a million dollars plus. Bro, I'll, listen, bro, I'll spin the bag, bro. I'll drop the bag on all these rats' heads, bro. I can't lie to you. I don't like them after learning about these little these little conniving. Bro, they're built like New York rats, bro. I can't do it. No. I was going to try to justify that the Skaven in a way don't have it as bad as no. humanity, but even I couldn't bring myself to do that. I will say, however, that humans and rats have very different mindsets about living situations. Specifically, the rats always have the grind set. Every Skaven from the lowliest slave to the Grey Seers think they're the best and they just have to work their way up to being in total control to guide the Skaven to victory. Most of them are wrong, of course, but they still believe this, and they're so ambition-driven that their position in life is almost irrelevant to them beyond what it allows them to have access to and get away with. So, no, the Skaven certainly aren't living better than humans, but it also definitely doesn't bother them as much as an equivalent living situation would a human. Rats stay winning. Now for no, 40K, no, they don't. No, this they is don't. the one I wanted to talk about the most because a lot of people seem to think that humanity is living its best life here if they aren't actively in a war zone. It isn't. Humanity in 40k is miserable. It's slaving away in service to a corpse on a throne in miserable conditions where it will receive almost nothing in exchange for lifelong servitude. But in 40k, there's loads of different specific worlds to look at for exactly why it sucks to be a human. If you live on a pleasure world, I will grant you that life is probably good. Even as a servant, you're still on a pleasure world. Life isn't that bad when your job is being a butler in the Garden of Eden. Oh no, my weekends are spent relaxing at the beach and drinking martinis all day long. How do I do it? But pleasure worlds are rare. They are such a small fraction of planets in the Imperium of Man that they're barely worth mentioning. Truth be told, I only brought them up because I need to get the argument against my points out of the way first. If that makes me an asshole, then that's up to you to decide. For the suck, let's go to the civilized worlds. A lot of people say that they're equivalent of, you know, a modern day first world country. And I will admit that in the Caiaphas Cain books, some of the times when Cain is wandering a planet looking for ways to avoid the war zone he's supposed to be a part of, these worlds don't look like the worst places to live. This viewpoint isn't wrong, but it also isn't telling the whole story. They're roughly the equivalent of Earth as it is now, plus or minus a few hundred years of technology. So you could live in the world that's the modern day Germany or America. Or you could live in the equivalent of a colonial world where one part of the world controls the rest of it. The Imperium doesn't care if that's the case. You may be slaving away at a sugar plantation, but as long as the guard gets its tith, then it doesn't gonna do shit. Or you could live on the planet of sweatshop factories that has just little levels of pollution to not Ooh. count as a forge world. Technically counts as a civilized world, but tell that to the factory workers making ultramarine plushies for the system a few light years over for their entire lives. But even the most wonderful civilized world, you aren't living the ideal 1950s suburban American community without all the society problems ending with the suffix phobia, or ism. You're living in the world of the man in the high castle, or yeah. given that it's Warhammer, Wolfenstein land is probably more accurate. Your government dictates how you think, how you work, and how you live in general. I can't, I mean, that kind of sounds like real life. Listen, I don't want to get too deep or nothing like that, but, but that kind of sounds like real life. I mean, bro, if I'm thinking about it, like, like, like humans in Warhammer 40k, let's just keep it real. Uh, of what I've learned so far, bro, yes, they are at the bottom of the bottom. That, like, whenever it comes to just power level, whatever, they are at the bottom of the bottom. They get wiped out easily, bro. I mean, humans are human, bro. Humans are fragile, bro. Humans are just humans, all right? But at the end of the day, one thing that I would say about humans is, bro, bro, they're still, <laughs> they're still there. That's the thing. Like, I, like, I can see if, like, one, if, like, one, you know, I, like, I could see if, like, one world got blown up and then, like, boom, humans died on there, whatever. But, like, in all these factions that I, that, you know, that I hear about and how, like, some of these factions will just, like, just, like, destroy, like, the, they would just, like, destroy the people that they're, like, protecting or whatever. To be honest, though, bro, like, yeah, cool. Like, they destroy, like, their own humans or whatever because, obviously, like, bro, these, like, you got, like, these, bro, 9 to 12 foot built soldiers going around just destroying people even though they're supposed to be protecting them. Um, I mean, and bro, those factions are absolutely horrible. But back to my point, bro, they're still there, bro. They're still very, like, resilient. Even though they're very fragile and, like, you know, like, they can just be gone and snap of a finger or whatever. And, like, they're, you know, they're at the low of the low. They're still there, bro. That's one thing that I can respect. So, I mean, obviously, like, you know, if I was in a Warhammer 40K universe, uh, I'm not going out uh, bad at all. As a matter of fact, bro, I'll be, I, I'll really work my way up to become a general, you know, to become general of uh, one of these factions and stuff like that. Um, because I wouldn't go down that easily. I don't, bro, I don't care if I get, if I get all the way poked up with all types of swords, bro. I'm going to still live.
Sure, it can be more subtle on these planets, but your life is still completely at the whim of the Imperium. Your religious beliefs are decided for you. If you bring up that perhaps this religion everyone is following has a few flaws, then you are going to be black bagged before you can finish the sentence. Dang. It is a veneer of pleasantry hiding the fact that you are living in the most horrid dictatorship ever. Wonder why Bobby stopped showing up at the country club? Well, you shouldn't, because Bobby never existed, and if you bring him up again, you're going to the same place he did. Just because in a civilized world you aren't actively having the Imperium's boot step on your throat doesn't mean it's a wonderful life. In fact, it's still a shitty life. The Imperium is just doing its best to make sure you don't realize it. Just because you have a decently comfy bed to retire to at night doesn't mean you live a good life. Your human rights are still being viciously violated, and not knowing about that fact doesn't make it better. It's worth remembering that the Imperium is a nightmare. It's not a good place. It is repeatedly stated to be corrupt and incompetent and ruthless and nightmarish and several other negative adjectives. I mean, hell, Games Workshop has said as much directly on multiple occasions. 40k also has the added benefit over fantasy that your government can decide, well, this planet needs to go and burn you and your world to kingdom come. Mini rant over. What about agricultural worlds? Gotta be a nice planet-wide farm, right? That sounds relaxing. Well, the Imperium is such a mess of technological levels that, yes, yeah, some are probably like that. But then you're just back to being a Bretonian serf with the knowledge that sometimes big metal birds come from the sky to take your food. Otherwise, you live on a planet that's constantly dealing with fertilizer runoff and is being kept just ecologically clean enough to keep all the food production from dying out. These places suck. Hive worlds? Good God, they're awful. <laughs> they're not having you work 22 hours a day, 7 days a week. That level of grimdark is too stupid for me to push as fact. But what is fact is that you live in an apartment most people would consider to be a closet at best. You have no privacy because your walls are shared with 10 other people, half of whom are actually part of your family. The building you live on is also 10,000 years old and hasn't been maintained in 5,000, so have fun with the occasional structural collapse taking a small country's worth of people down with it. Pollution is a given, so have fun breathing an atmosphere of 20% carbon dioxide and God knows what else. Oh, wait. That sounds like L.A. <laughs> all right. No, hold on. All right. I like L.A., so I'm not going to roast L.A. like that. But you know what's interesting about what he's saying right now? He's basically staying off, like, all the bad situations of, like, people not having a great life. But to be honest with you, bro, some people might differ. Obviously, you know, obviously minus, like, the, you know, like, my, like minus the populated. I said populated. Oh, my God the uh the pollution in the air and stuff like that obviously my, my mind is that nobody wants that but what i'm trying to say is like in, in some situations like the like the um living conditions of you know you living in a really tiny you know new york apartment where like you know as soon as you walk in you know your bed's right there the, the stove's right there or whatever da, 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 the walls are thin you know you can hear the neighbors breathe and stuff like that now to be fair that doesn't really sound pretty cool but to be honest, bro, some people might just accept it for what it is and just live. You know, the thing is, right, one thing that I feel like that, that humans do, obviously, like, you know, this all this is fiction or whatever. But one thing I feel like the humans in like in Warhammer 40K, like fantasy and uh, 40K, and I might be wrong. So, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I feel like at that point, they just accept it like, for, like you know, like it is what it is, you know. They can't change it. You know, they're just going to just keep living or whatever. So they're just going to just accept it for what it is. I think only humans can really, not only humans can do that, but I, obviously like us humans, like we have like a conscious mind or whatever, and we can make our own decisions and stuff like that. I just think that only humans can legit just make that switch in their brain to the, where, to, uh, to the point to where they're like, you know what? This is what it is. I can't change everything right now, but I'm going to try to change everything day by day by day by day. I'm going to try to change stuff like little by little every single day. And I think only humans can make that switch in their mind of like, you know what, bro? You know, I'm only human. I'm not like, you know, I'm not like a demigod or nothing like that. So I'm going to just keep living. I'm gonna just live day by day. You know, and if, and if my time is coming, my time is coming. I, that's what I feel like humans are in Warhammer 40K. I feel like they can't really... You know, obviously, bro, like when you got these uh, dreadnoughts and, and, and when you got these soldiers that, that, that are like nine to 12 feet tall, they're the same size as basketball hoops. At the end of the day, like, you know, you can't really do nothing about it. So you just accept it for what it is and you just keep living. That's what I feel like. Even though humans are like legit fragile in real life and in like, you know, Warhammer 40K, I still feel like they just accept it. For, like, you know, it is what it is and they just keep living. That's how I feel about it. Um, even though they are like the weakest like you know the humans are like the weakest like level in warhammer 40k they just accept it you know and they just keep living that's all you can do you can't do nothing else about it like you 
It is what it is. Chances are you live so far beneath the quote unquote surface of the hive world that not only have you never seen the sun, but you may not have even heard of it. If you're what? educated, you're educated exactly enough to know how much to work in the factory that has never heard of something like a guardrail, much less actual hazard. Okay, now this is training. bad. Oh, and farther you. you go down in the hive, the worst gets somehow. You've got mutants, chaos cults, gene sealer cults, fanatical cults of the emperor, which you would think would be on your side until they murder you and your family for breathing in a way that they think is unholy, and waterfalls of factory waste that turn not only the lower levels of the hive, but the areas surrounding it in the places that are somehow worse than the rest of it. On a hive world, your life is miserable. Just because you aren't working 22-7 in a factory making okay. guns doesn't mean you're just hanging around chill. I'm sorry to pause it again. Um, Now, when, when it comes to, like, you know, the humans being slaves and stuff like that, and they're working, like, you know, 25-8 and stuff, I'm gonna be honest with you, that's horrible. That's that's an, that's the, that's an exception. It's horrible. But uh, whenever it came down to, like, Warhammer Fantasy and stuff like that, where yes you know the emperor you know will kill you or whatever if you breathe wrong you still have like your own like little stuff you know you have like your animals or whatever and i think that if i was like one of those if I was, like first of all if i was like you know one of those people in warhammer fantasy bro i can't lie to you bro i'm standing up to the emperor right there bro uh i'm throwing hands with the emperor um and you know if i die i die it is what it is but th this is an exception like the whole slavery part whatever the 20 like the 25 8 slavery not the 24 7 the 25 8 the 25 8 slavery i can't lie to you that's a problem out. just because you get a lunch break in hell doesn't mean you aren't in hell also true, this true, is more of a true, personal true. belief of mine so feel free to accept or ignore this part at your leisure but true. even though hive worlds are a minority of planets in the imperium i genuinely think they make up at least 50 percent of the people in it they have trillions of people on them if not more some of the things i've read place that number in the quadrillions that many people on one planet is going to cause nothing but squalor unrest and countless other problems at all times if i'm right yeah. about what percentage of humanity is located on hive worlds and that means being born a human in 40k means you'll most likely be placed in one of these shit pits if i'm wrong then these places are still absolute hell holes to live in let's run through the rest of the worlds real quick because i feel like i've made my point if you live on a fair world then you're just a caveman so yeah that sucks if you think a death world is great to live on and you would totally survive there then i have nothing else to say to you that would convince you otherwise you silly little larp are you <laughs> Forge worlds are like hive worlds only so polluted that if you aren't augmented to survive on them or a tech priest was already 80 percent machine anyways you can't even breathe on the things Dang. fortress worlds are like Cadia, so your life is going to be nothing but constant military service or working to feed the military in horrid factory conditions, only this time you're probably going to be the target of some invading army or other every few weeks. Night worlds have all the fun of feudalism crossed with robots. Sure, oh, it probably no. looks cool, but I wouldn't want to live there. And while they may be rarely populated, if you're unfortunate enough to live on or even near a demon world, they're called demon worlds. Do you? Yeah, yeah, it's over. It's over. Demon world. Oh yeah, bro, it's over, bro. Yep, it's over. It's Jehovah. Never mind. You know what? If you live on Demon World, ignore what I said. <laughs> ignore everything that I said before. Yeah, your life is 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 totaled like a car. It's over. Really need me to explain that one? All in all, being a human sucks in 40k even more than it does in fantasy. The one thing I can say for humanity is that if you're part of the elite, your life is probably great. Life extending treatments, luxurious living, power over the masses, yeah. the works. But that's such a small percentage of people that I don't even think I can say that they're the one percent. They're the one percent of the one percent because most of the top one percent is only considered such because they get a piece of bread that isn't moldy in their weekly rations. Dang. Even living as a superhuman in 40k still sucks. Space marines are constantly fighting horrid wars yeah. and depending on which chapter you are, you may or may not have degenerative DNA inserted into you. Hope you have fun turning into a rage monster who thinks everyone around him is named Horus. And since this just seems to escape the mind of most people, don't forget that intense indoctrination are explicitly part of space marine training. I know the word gets used so often in 40k that it loses all meaning, but please remember that indoctrination is a bad thing. Also, the benefits you do get from being a space marine are almost irrelevant because there's roughly one space marine per planet in the Imperium. Yeah, I know Wait, that some chapters have more than just a thousand marines, but it's still such what? a small <laughs> fraction of people that you aren't going to be one, let alone someone like a Wait, there's benefits of being a space marine? I thought all you did was kill, kill, kill. Wait, there's wait, there's benefits? What what's the benefits? What you what you get a happy what like you get like a happy birthday or something like that? What what's the benefits? What they not getting a 401 or oh, that was it? The 401k? They not getting a retirement plan. Bro, they're fighting for centuries. What what's the what are we getting a, what are we getting a free McDonald's meal? What are we do?
Custodes. All of this, of course, is on top of the fact that every time someone blinks, Xenos or Chaos invade another world. Compare this to the other races. Tau actually have pretty decent standards of living. Not always great, given that there's pretty prevalent propaganda, but it's still better than the Imperium. Mind control is the lesser evil compared to nuking your own planet. The Elder live in a perfect post-scarcity society when they aren't fighting, so that's that. Yeah, their souls are forfeit upon death, but in day-to-day -day life, they're having a fine go with things. Orcs only care about fighting, and they're always fighting, so they're in heaven, same as in fantasy. Tyranids do not have the capacity to care about these things, so who cares? I don't think the High Fleets have an existential crisis every time they devour a world. Dark Eldor are more or less the same as the Dark Elves. Their souls do drain away, but solving that issue is incredibly easy. Just stab the nearest slave in the throat and your agony quote is fulfilled. Have your soul back. There's peril and despair in Kamara, but there's equal amounts of debauchery and the fun kind of mayhem, so I'm still willing to place humanity below them on the quality of life scale. If you ask the common Necron what it thinks about its living situation, it's just gonna look at you blankly because the average Necron warrior doesn't have the ability to think about that kind of thing. Their nobles might be sad about not having souls or working sexual organs anymore, but they're also immortal and incredibly powerful beings who can come back from death, so it could certainly be worse. Hell, depending on their interests, not being organic might be a good thing to them. Raisin for Man, man, having that head shape is crazy. I just got, man, that head shape is, man, man, hey, bro, uh, listen, man, I would have to, bro, <sighs> having that head shape, bro, look at this thing, bro, look at this, oh, my goodness gracious, bro, oh, my goodness, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro, me and, bro, me and the guys, bro, me, me and the homies, bro, we might have to find whoever created us like this, bro. Yeah, bro, this ain't right. Example has until the heat that is of the not universe right, to collect bro. things because of it. Overall, yeah, life as humanity sucks in 40k. Life as humanity sucks in the Warhammer settings in general. Don't be a human in these settings if you had a choice. Also, I'm employing the all ors canon, not everything is true defense, except my interpretation of the setting is definitely the correct one in this case, so you are certainly wrong, and I am right, because I have the YouTube <laughs> channel, so I get to make the rules. That's true. I am not five years old, I am six. Thank you, of course, to my channel members for generously donating their funds to support me. May your pancreases never falter in their sacred duty. Thank you all for watching, and take care out there. Man, shout out to everybody, you know, for watching the video with me, man. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, you know, what did I expect? I, I mean, yeah, bro, us humans, bro, whenever it comes to the Warhammer 40k and fantasy, bro, we're down bad, bro. And it is what it is. You know, you can't really, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, obviously, like, you know. Again, you know, if I was, you know, if, if I was a human on there, bro, um, bro, I would transcend time. You know, I, I, to be honest with you, you know, I, I would really transcend, um, you know, the ability, you know, to uh, to fight, you know, to be honest with you. Um, I wouldn't go out like everybody else. I mean, you guys would, but I wouldn't. You know, I, I'm not going out like everybody else. Um, I would just I would just survive. You know, I, I would legit be like, you know, I, to be honest with you, bro. I'll kind of be like related to the emperor, but that's just me, man. Comment down below, man. What do you guys think about my reaction to this video? Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. See you guys every time out and peace out, y'all.